I don't know how I, mean, I don't know how to express my emotions today without overly being <clears throat> excited. But I just want to say this morning that um, I believe with my heart of hearts this morning that. this past week that the world has a victory. We good? So I believe this past week that um, not only um, our country, but our world had a victory. Um, and I want to explain that today because um, I want to talk to you about how God endorses and God's endorsement on your influence in the world that you live in. God wants to put an endorsement on your influence. As you live for him, as you glorify him, as you live your every day in and out for him, he wants to endorse your influence. Our influence to the people that are around us is a powerful thing. And um, I just got some disturbing text this week, and, and it just it kind of shook me to my core, but it, but, it, but it didn't because the Lord got a hold of me real quick and um, settled my spirit in that. But, um, and I don't have to share names, I don't have to share anything like that, but I, I, was, I was told that I did not have a authority to influence my congregation when it comes politi politically. I disagree with that strongly. So, I feel like that as your leader, as your pastor, as one who is ordained by God, one who is called by God, I believe that I have every right to teach, influence this body to be amazing, sons and daughters of God, to make right and clear choices with everything across the board, including politics. I signed this church up as a nonprofit organization for that very reason, so I could stand here and proclaim to you who I would vote for. I never told any one of you who to vote for, but I told you who I was going to vote for because I know that I carry an influence with me. And so I want you to know this morning that I'm not interested in building a mega church. I'm interested in building an army of usable people. And I believe you guys are that army. I believe there's more to come. Not saying that we're not going to grow. Not saying that we're not going to fill the, fill the chairs and have another service during the day. Not saying that at all, but I believe that will happen. But right now, I feel like God is, 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 is ministering to us in a way that we become these mighty, influential people of God. That step out into highways and byways and reach a lost and dying world. And so, keep doing that. Keep being an influence. Keep going out in the streets and telling people about Jesus. Keep living it before them. You guys know Queen Esther. She was endorsed by God and she was used in her influence to save her people from being destroyed. Do you guys know that story? Esther was used to save her people from being destroyed. She used her influence in a political realm of leaders that tried to bring a coup against her people. But because of her voice, because of her influence, she rose up and went to the king. Not the king of kings, but the king of the day. And spoke her concern to him. And in that concern, tables were turned. Her people were saved. And in Matthew 5, 16 says this. It says, let your light so shine before men that they would see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. That is a mandate for us to let your light shine. Let your testimony shine before men 
Let your influence shine before man. And through the testimony and influence, they will see God and glorify him because of your influence, because of the Jesus, the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. I want you to know today that God wants to endorse you. How many would like to be endorsed today by God? Some of you. Everybody? Hope? Um, when God endorses you, he's going to use you and take you places you've never been. <laughs> I can testify to that. I can testify. Listen, a guy, I can testify, a guy who uh, has been taken places that I've never been. Like, like, like from where I was to where, I mean, reaching up to grab rock bottom in my life, you know, reaching, literally reaching up to grab rock bottom. And then coming above that. And then going from glory to glory to glory to glory to here. I'm, I'm just excited today that, that God is using me to influence other for the kingdom of God. For what's right. For right choices. You might say, how can I be endorsed? How can I influence someone else? Young men on the end. Have you been influenced by someone to come to church or just to, Yeah. Where'd you meet that person at? Awesome. Love it. Powerful. Powerful. Some of you guys go out in the streets. How many of you go out in the streets and just testify of the love of Jesus? How many of you invited somebody? I only had like four people raise their hand right there. So um, this is where we're going to back all this up. No, listen. If you are not influencing them, somebody else will. If you're not out in the streets telling them about Jesus, someone's going to be telling them about something else. There's a song that says you've got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. And we've got to be that stand for the young ones who don't even know, for the ones who don't even know what it's like to encounter God, to encounter Jesus or have that relationship with Holy Spirit. We have to be that people. Raise your hands again if you go out in the, in the streets. You know, God used men and women in the Bible to be influencers, to be powerful people. He used broken people. How many of you have been broken? Yeah, every hand should come up there. One day I'll be able to ask that question. Every hand will come up, the other question I ask. Abraham was an old man. What did God do for him? He promised him the numbers of the sands of the sea is going to be the children that you have. Yet he was an old man. Joseph was abused, yet he became a ruler that through a famine in his knowledge and, and the dreams that he interpreted became a ruler from, from being abused to a ruler who saved that whole generation of people because of, because of how he seen things. Elijah was suicidal. Elijah was suicidal, but he was caught up in the whirlwind. He was used by God. See, God uses broken people who call out to him. God will use broken people who call out to him. Elijah was influential because he influenced Elisha to step in his role when he was caught up in a whirlwind. Jacob was bankrupt, but he got everything back and plus everything back plus, like Shelley's 59 plus one. Moses had a speech impediment, but he led the people out of Israel. Gideon was afraid, and God reduced his army and used that small army to conquer a large army. Samson was a womanizer. You guys know his story. He was a womanizer and tied from side to side in the pillars, and God gave him that strength one more time 
to pull the pillars down. Rahab was a prostitute. And God used her in a mighty way. The Samaritan woman was, was divorced. So I'm saying all this because I want you to know that God can use anybody in any situation who's gone through anything to be a people that goes out and reaches and touches the world that we live in. She was divorced, yet she went to a city. The Samaritan woman was divorced. When Jesus told her everything she ever did, she went to a city and changed the city. Noah was a drunk, but God had him build an ark. Saved the people again. Jeremiah was young, but he became a prophet and prophesied. His prophecies still stand today. Jacob was a cheater. Remember, he cheated his brother out of that birthright. God redeemed it all. Jacob, you remember when Jacob's brother was walking and, and Jacob humbly bowed before him. Humbly bowed before him. And their relationship was redeemed. So many mighty things through Jacob. David was a murderer. Murdered Bathsheba's husband as he took her on for his own bride. But he was a man after God's heart. Jonah ran from God, swallowed by a well and spit back out. The people of Nineveh, God gave them grace 40 days to repent, to come to him. Naomi was a widow, used to feed a people Peter denied Christ three times, not just once, but three times. And God redeemed him every single time. Matthew worried about everything. Zacchaeus was a wee little man up in a tree and money hungry. The disciples fell asleep while praying when Jesus asked them to pray. They fell asleep. And Paul, who was a Pharisee, killed Christians, persecuted Christians, and then became one. And each one of these people, as you go through their stories and the Word of God, you will see that they were endorsed by God, and they used their influence for God, for the kingdom of God, to build the kingdom of God. Yeah. It's up to you. It's up to you and me to have our lives in that center place. And I'm not sure right now. I mean, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of set back a little bit by the amount of hands that come up about people going out and ministering to other people. I'm not sure why that is um, at this point in in our walk with God. But I'd like to see that number increase. I'd like to see that increase because I want you to know that you have value and God needs you. When the Bible talks about the harvest being ready and the labors are few, we have to increase the labors so we can go out and minister into this world. Guys, we have to be bold. Dr. Lairdon, who has written a hundred books, texted me this morning and said, will you pray for me that I have boldness to preach in Denmark today to powerful men and women of God. So I did. It's, there's nothing wrong with praying that God will give you boldness to go out in the highways and the byways and reach people for the kingdom of God. Your influence is powerful. Some of you have big influence in this city. It's powerful. If we can take that influence and shift it just a little bit to where we use it to bring people to the kingdom of God, bring them to to a church house, any church house in the city, to where they can come and find out what it's like to live for Jesus fully, to be fully indwelled with the Spirit of God, to be fully encountered by God. 
to know what that's like. And it's up to us to have Jesus center in our life, in that center place in our life. It's up to you and me. The Lord woke me this morning. Um, he always wakes me every early every morning, but um, this morning he had a particular message for me. And um, some of it I, I can share and some of it I can't. Um, but what he said to me this morning, he said, it's not because of you, it's because of me. Some things that I was going through, things that I was feeling in my heart, things that, that has been spoken to me, he said, it's not because of you, it's because of me. And I would like to share the rest of it to you, but I can't share the rest of the, 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 what he spoke to me this morning. But it is powerful, and it goes along those same lines. And I'm grateful that he spoke that to me because my heart had been grieved. But he did say to me, he said this, he said, we look at the outward appearance of man, but he said, I look at the heart of man. This last election, he said, I look at the policy of man that aligns with the word of God. He looks at the policy of man that aligns with the word of God. We had two different people in this election. Okay, both, listen, both of them were created in the image of God. Both were created to be powerful people for God. One denied God before man. One sets powerful people around him that get to pray over him. Whether he's in a full relationship with God, I have no idea. But I do know that he's letting God set powerful people around him that have influence, that will influence, and it will rub off on him eventually, if it hasn't already. When I seen him a few weeks ago in North Carolina, I seen a shifting, I seen a change in his heart. When I looked at him, I seen a change in, in him. And in that change, um, I believe it's because there are powerful leaders who are standing before him, like, like Dr. Franklin Graham coming out before and praying and praying over him and standing and endorsing him and using his platform to endorse this man who has an agenda that will highlight heaven. It's not hard for me to speak this message to you this morning. I just want to be clear because there are people that are going to pick this apart this morning and they're going to tear this message apart piece by piece. And they're going to call me and they're going to text me and tell me what I am not allowed to do and what I cannot do. And I, and, and I know that I'm going to stand strong and I'm going to be bold in all of that. And I will take that and I will meet any time with anyone like that. And I will meet face to face and we'll discuss these things face to face if you have any objection to what I'm talking about this morning. But I want to be a person that empowers people. I want to be a person that influences people to make right choices, to make biblical choices, to make choices that make a difference for the kingdom of God. See, I'm not about playing games. I'm, I'm done with those days of playing games, of trying to woo people or entertain people. That's not my heart. My heart is to win souls for Jesus Christ. That's my heart. That's the only thing I'm going to do. And I have been spoken to that if I step on certain toes, that certain people won't come to this house. God will bring them. Holy Spirit will draw them. I'm not the one that does it anyhow. It's Holy Spirit that does it anyhow. He's the one that draws and brings people this way. It's not me. Yes, I might go out and you might go out in the streets and the highways and byways and you might minister to people in the streets, but it's not you. It's the Jesus that lives inside of you, Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. That's what draws them into the house. And I know that God is doing that. I know that he's drawing people into this place for such a time as this because he wants us to be a powerful people. He wants us to be an army that we can go out into the, into the streets and minister in such a way, in such a way that changes everything in this small city that we live in. I've got a group of men who are drawn here from, from Indianapolis. Thank you, Nate, for introducing me to them. But from Indianapolis, I met with them Friday, a couple of pastors, and they want to come down and do an outreach in the city, and they want to use this church as a place to send people 
from this outreach in the city. They're doing their own ministry in their city, but God put Martinsville on their hearts. And so they got a group of like 30 people that have been in the world and said, I don't want, I'm not in the world anymore. I want to do what I'm supposed to do. They got a group of 30 people that were once hooked on drugs, no longer. And they said, we got to get in the streets. Help us to get to Martinsville. And so we're going to do an outreach with them. It's going to be amazing. We're going to go calling. We're going to go hit every neighborhood. We're going to strategically just canvas this city and hit every neighborhood. And then we're going to have a big party either here or downtown on the square. Either place, it doesn't matter. But that's what God's doing. I don't have to do it. These people come to me. Through why? Through influence of someone else. And that person shared the testimony of what God's doing here. And then that's what drew them here. We are to be the light that shines in the world. Hallelujah. I want you to remember this morning that you are who he says you are. You are who he says you are, not who the world says you are. And I noticed in this past election, I noticed that they were they're on both sides, on both sides of the realm. They're, they were they're trying to get a vote from, um, from Hollywood or trying to get a vote from influential people, superstars, movie stars, trying to get this vote from them. Both sides were doing this, playing this game. And, and you've got Taylor Swift who is, who is endorsing in front of 70,000 people who she endorsed. And you've got these other um, Hulk Hogan and these other stars who are endorsing who they felt like they should endorse. But through all of that, the only endorsement that mattered was the endorsement of God. And he gave his endorsement to one person for this election. It's not Democrat, Republican. It's what God is doing. He can work through either party to get his agenda done. But I believe this, this time around, he said enough is enough. Enough is enough. And he, and he stepped in on our behalf with, a, with, with some people who have a retrobate mind given over to the things of the world. He stepped in on our behalf, on our behalf, to make things right again. And I believe, I, I, I mean, I... I look at my stocks and look at the stuff in, that I'm invested in. Day one, as soon as, as soon as, soon as, as soon as the election was over, my stocks just shot up. I mean, I, I'm, I'm like rich. No, I'm not. But, um, but my stocks did go. I don't have a lot invested. But what I do have invested, um, wish I would have invested more. Um, but anyhow. So I know that God's hand of endorsement is on this. Our girls that are in sports are going to be able to play sports with other girls. Okay? Babies are going to live. There's going to be babies that are going to live. There's going to be thousands and thousands of babies that are going to live. There's so many things that I could say. But God is not about choosing the man for say in this instant he's chose what they stood for. And I could tell you things about Donald J. Trump that would shake your boots, and I know some things probably other people don't know. Um, he was kind of like a David, or he's kind of like what David would have been like, you know, that, that, that womanizer, that, you know, just that mouth on him that just tore everything apart. And we see that that doesn't even matter. Because God's going to choose who he's going to choose when the timing's right. He's going to choose that person. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for, um, I feel like a victory that was won. I'm grateful for that. And I'm not going to um, change my direction with that ever. Um, so that's just, I, I don't stand Democrat or Republic. I stand for what's right. And I stand for who is right and who God needs to be have in the leadership of this country. I stand behind that. 
if Donald Trump's, I'm going to tell you this, if Donald Trump's policies were opposite, if it was switched, my vote would have switched. It's all about the policy. I believe I have a right to share with you my opinion on the policy. Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way they should go, and even when he is older, he will not depart from it. That should give you peace right there. When you train up a child the way he should go, when he gets old, he won't depart from it. So some of you guys are fretting over your children. If you raise them right, if you raise them in the admiration of the Lord, and they're falling away, guess what? This here, this is a promise to us that says, they, this is a promise that says, even when he is old, he will not depart from it. So they might stray a little bit, but they're not going to go all the way gone. They're, they're going to come back because we did it right and we raised them right. Even when we didn't do it right, because we're doing it right now. That's going to cover them. That's going to protect them. And I want to tell you a story. My children, so th- this, this, is, this is the power of influence. My children, my sons, I raised them, um, raised them up. T- I taught them how to roof and side and, and do construction. And um, they all do that now. They, have, they ha- all have their own businesses now, and they do stuff like that now. And um, when they were seven years old, they were on roofs, ripping roofs off of houses and putting shingles back on at seven years old. I just taught them how to do stuff, and they knew how to do stuff. And I challenged them one day, and because of the influence that we have, we can challenge people to be stretched in ways they never thought they could be stretched. And you know these cast iron tubs, there was this cast iron tub that was sunk in the floor. They had it set in the floor like a little jacuzzi or whatever they wanted to use it for. It wasn't on top, it was out in the floor. And I said, boys, I got to go to town, I need you to get this up. And they were probably 13, 14, 15 years old. And... Um, and I need you to get this out of the floor so we can um, get it out of here because we were remodeling the bathroom. They said, all right, Dad, we got it. And I don't know how they did it, but they built some kind of a contraption that when I got back, they had pulled that thing out of the, out of, I mean, and they're like, they're, they're hundreds of pounds. I mean, they are heavy. And these boys got that thing pulled out and pulled it. Why? Because they, they had influence from their father to teach them the right things. And I want to tell you this, when it comes to, when it comes to um, guns and stuff like that, anybody have guns? You don't have to say, you don't have to say you do. I do. Um, but I'm very careful with guns. I'm very careful. And I'm, I brought my boys up around guns, and I'm very protect, protective over that. And I wanted them to know, as young boys, how to handle a weapon. And to this day, I'm going to tell you right now, to this day, you could hand them, you could, you could hand them a gun. After you check it and clear it, they're going to check it and clear it. Again, I just brought them up that way. Why? Because of the influence that I have. I brought them up as a child to do those things. And now I can do the same thing, and they still, to me today, I'll, I'll, I'll check a gun, hand it to them, and they will clear it right in front of me. Why? Because the power of influence, the power of influence that you and I carry means so much. Hebrews 13, 7 says this. And I'm not going to linger long today, guys. I just want to, I just wanted to share my heart. I felt like um, I had a message for you last week and the Lord changed it. And, um, and so maybe we'll get to do that next week. Hebrews 13, 7. This is for all you who are, listen. This is for all of you, all of you who have been broken, who have been beat, now are rising up as leaders. This is for all of you, every one of you. This passage says, remember those who lead you. You are those kind of leaders that lead others. Who spoke the word of God to you. And consider the result of their conduct. And it says, imitate their faith. Imitate what they do. So that's what I want to be. I want to be that man that stands before you, that man of my word, that chosen vessel used by God, endorsed by God, the chosen vessel who lives holy, who is sanctified holy, who is consecrated holy, and is filled with Holy Spirit. I stand before you, and I ask you today to imitate that faith today. As your pastor, as your leader, 
I operate in all the five-fold ministry. I operate in every part of it. But the part I want you to stand to today is imitate the faith that I have in Jesus, the faith that I have in his word, and be strong in all your might. And when you go out of these doors today, I would love for everyone to come back next week and say, I ministered to somebody this week. And I understand, listen, for me, it's the evangelist in me. It's, it's not even like it's second nature for me to do that. And I understand for you, it might not be. But I don't want God to come back and say, I gave you a talent. What did you do with it? I gave you my word. What did you do with it? Because he has. He's given us a talent, some 10, some more, some 100. He's given us talents, and he wants us to use those talents. But I do not want, and I will not be one, that when I stand before God and he says, what did you do with what I gave you? I'm like, well, I hid it and kept it suppressed because I wasn't sure what people were going to do with it. That won't be an excuse that rides with heaven. It won't be an excuse that rides with God. So as we stand, you guys get to have early lunch today. I want to declare today that we will be a people who will continue to pray for our country, for our leaders, for those who God has chosen, for those who God has endorsed, for those who have influence. I want to continue as a church to pray for them day in and day out. As Brother Randy and I talked this past week, I don't want to throw a last minute Hail Mary pass in prayer because we're in dire straits with our country. I want us to be a church, a body of people that constantly prays for our leaders. No matter Republican or Democrat, we pray for our leaders, the one that are in those positions, that God will move in and through them to change our country, to make this place a better place to live. This is the only, listen, this is the only country that people are coming to the borders and flocking to try to get in. Don't let any media tell you that any other country is greater because it's not. There's not a country that's greater than the United States of America, which the reason it's great is because it was founded on the very word of God. That's what makes this country great. People wouldn't be flocking in if it wasn't great. So they see something in our country, and what they see is freedom. And I don't like seeing veterans. I don't like seeing the price that you guys paid with your bodies, with your minds, the price that you guys had to pay, firefighters, police officers, coroners, the price that you guys had to pay for freedom in this country. I don't like seeing that trampled over and just freely open up now. The gates are wide open and everything that was done is null and void. I don't like seeing that. It To me, when the Lord showed me a vision of that, he showed me a river of blood from our fallen soldiers and that we were just letting people walk through that blood. It's okay to come in the United States, come legally just like we have to go in your country legally. So I decree that we are a prayerful people over our nation, over our leaders, over our country. Randy, Brother Randy is going to start having some different decrees that we're going to just decree and speak out because our word is powerful, our influence is powerful, and we're going to continue to speak these things out that are powerful into the atmosphere. Because even speaking words in the atmosphere is influential. Is there anybody here that's not saved this morning? I'm not going to woo you to come. 
I'm not going to beg you to come, but if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just come forward and let us pray with you. Be bold. Step out. When I say, do you know Jesus Christ, I'm going to tell you this. When you ask Jesus to come in your heart and live in your life, there will be change. There has to be change. There has to be fruit. If there's no fruit in your life of Jesus Christ, then, then you're not saved. I'm sorry, but you're not saved because there will be fruit. If you invest in Jesus Christ, there will be fruit in your life. There has to be. So if you're fruitless and in need of some fruit, come and ask Jesus to come in your heart. But for the rest of us this morning, let's close your eyes, please. I know the Bible says wash and pray. See what crazy thing is going to happen. Father, I just pray over your people right now. I just speak a boldness into them right now, God. A boldness from heaven right now that would just... Give them that mandate to do what you've called them to do, Father. Lord, they're no longer sitting on the sidelines, just, just easing our way into heaven, not saying that they're not going to go to heaven, but God, there's so much more they can do in this world besides just be on the sidelines, ready to get in the game. But God, it's time to get in the game. It's time to get in the game. I noticed today, and I don't know a lot about who's helping and who's doing stuff, but I noticed we got uh, one of the main cleaners of the house is now running production as well. I heard them say we got two teachers. Father, raise your people up. They volunteer for everything else in the world. Lord, that they would come and volunteer in the house and do what they need to do, Lord, to take a load off someone else. God, give them that mandate. Give them that boldness, Father, when they're out in the streets to reach out to people, no matter what. When you, I, know that, I know that probably everyone here has had that unction just to go pray for someone, but they're afraid. God, we take that fear away right now in Jesus' name. When they're in the Walmart, Lord, let them minister to the people in Walmart. When they're at the gas stations, Lord, no matter who it is, let them just stop and talk and minister to someone. They don't even have to invite them to church. They just, just talk to them about Life, tell them to smile, whatever it might be, Lord, but just to reach out to other people, and that'll bring open doors to share the gospel, to share the gospel message. So I thank you, Father, right now for this body, for this powerful group of people who you've called to Life of Love Ministry Center in Martinsville, Indiana, for such a time as this. I speak boldness over you. I speak the grace of God over you. I speak healing over your bodies, over your ankles, over all those things that you stood up for today. I speak healing in your lives. Get in the Word of God, I pray. Get in the Word of God. Dig into the Word of God, not just through your Facebook apps and all that stuff, but, but get in the Word of God and see what He wants to show you. I promise you he has great things for you because you are a usable people. I promise you this morning that even if you're broken, God can use you if your heart's willing to seek him and serve him. And Father, we give you all the honor today and all the glory and all the power. And we thank you, Jesus, for who you are, for who we are in you. And all God's people said. Thank you, guys. Come back Wednesday. It's going to be powerful. Prayer night Wednesday. Shelly's having a party sometime. Go to it. Dress up. It's going to be fun.